meeting together in the headquarters of the BBVA Foundation Madrid in order to deliberate and decide, the committee has resolved to grant the BBVA Foundation Frontiers of Knowledge Award in Information and Communication Technologies category in its 16th edition to Professor Takeo Kanade, the UA and Helen Whittaker University Professor of Computer Science and Robotics at Carnegie Mellon University. Our modern technological society is increasingly reliant upon the ability of computers to comprehend and interpret visual images and scenes. Over four decades, as a researcher, teacher and mentor, Professor Takeo Kanade has pioneered the scientific study of computer vision and in doing so created solutions to a host of practical problems. Eschewing heuristic and ad hoc approaches and focusing instead on, on underlying mathematical and scientific models, Professor Kanade's work has created foundational algorithms for image understanding, motion processing, and robotics perception. These include groundbreaking work on optical flow that underlies motion estimation and video processing, as well as fundamental methods for scene reconstruction and object detection. His techniques enabled key technologies ranging from autonomous driving to augmented reality. Some of the earliest efforts in self-driving cars relied on his vision systems, such as the 1985 No Hands Across America program to drive across the United States without using a steering wheel. Professor Canade also pioneered face detection and recognition using machine learning algorithms, a technology now omnipresent in our cell phones. His origami world framework used, focused on distilling three-dimensional understanding from images. This, along his work in multi-baseline stereo, helped to solve critical problems in depth perception. Finally, his work in virtualized reality, creating alternative viewpoints to the real scene, opened areas of scientific exploration from medicine and surgery to the eye vision cameras demonstrated at sports events like the 2001 American Super Bowl. Professor Canade has made deep and impactful contributions to computer vision and practical problems spanning 3D reconstruction, object detection, motion processing, and robotics perception. These have not only shaped the scientific disciplines of artificial intelligence and robotics, but also have significantly transformed the technological world in which we live. I have developed various vision algorithms over my five-decade career. Probably the most notable is what is usually referred to as the Lucas Canade optical flow algorithm. When objects move uh, in a scene or you move your own camera, points in the image appear to move or flow. It's called an optical flow. Computing the optical flow precisely and quickly is fundamental requirement for any video or motion image analysis. One example of its use is video coding. Uh, we know 
that today video is efficiently coded from original source to MPEG and other video coding method. The basis of that coding is understand which points in the current image move to the next image, uh, which point in the next image. Once we understand that, then we don't need to send all the color or video information. Instead, simply send motion only. And that's the basis of uh, video coding. And my uh, optical flow algorithms is used for uh, basically any motion image data compression algorithms. The most important application of my work in robotics perception is probably navigation capability, such as uh, autonomous driving of cars or uh, autonomous helicopter. My team has developed a system that incorporates vision, not only uh, using the color and such cameras that are two-dimensional, but also three-dimensional camera that uh, captures the three-dimensional information directly. It's co usually called LiDAR. When we started our autonomous uh, driving back in early uh, 1980s, the capability of vision was relatively undeveloped, yet we could use at that time one of the very rare uh, LIDARs uh, available and showed that the use of LIDAR is very effective. Three-dimensional vision, LIDAR vision, is very effective in understanding the scene and the uh, location of the obstacles in order to safely drive a car. When the word virtual reality, VR, was coined back in the 90s, people worked on mostly uh, creating artificial uh, world by computer graphics and other uh, technologies, techniques. I thought it would be more interesting to start with the reality. In other words, we actually model or input reality into the computer so that that becomes a virtual reality. So in order to emphasize that aspect, that is the starting reality, rather than artificially creating reality, I coined the word virtualized reality. In other words, the reality that was virtualized. Um, today's terminology, maybe it is the same concept of virtual twin, that is the computerized model of a certain reality. So anyway, by using the many cameras, in other words, in order to create the virtualized reality, in order to create the model, complete three-dimensional, or not only the shape, but also appearance model of the reality, uh, you need to observe the scene by not just by one camera, but many cameras. So I started working on using multiple, not just several, but tens or fifties or even uh, hundreds of cameras placed in a room or environment so that the video that were captured by all of those cameras processed and create moving uh, reality, model of the reality. So I call it 4D modeling, not just the 3D modeling, but also uh, motion modeling. So anyway, the such an idea can have some uh, interesting applications. For example, creating the record of uh, important events such as surgery or uh, other uh, events so that other people later can visit and uh, observe and enjoy the same event. And uh, one very uh, popular, uh, turns out, application of the idea was to use many cameras to create a replay of a great play in a sporting event. The first of that type is called uh, iVision that was used 2000 
won American football Super Bowl. The whole stadium had 33 cameras、uh, on the upper deck of the stadium, looking into the field. And whatever a beautiful a play occurred, then the broadcaster can create a replay of that by spinning around the major player of that play by using a large number of robotic camera. And today, actually,、uh, as one can see, such a spinning replay in sporting events is used in almost any sports,、uh, as we can see in today's daily lives, as well as、uh, big events such as、uh, Olympic Games. Looking into the future, I foresee a couple of exciting. Applications of visual plus robotic capabilities. One is helping people, older people and people with disability, to live independently. I call such technologies in general quality of life technologies. To human, I believe that the best quality of life is to be able to do as much as possible. Independently, what you need to live your daily lives, and I think advanced、uh, vision-based,、uh, as well as of course other、uh, capabilities, robotic functions can be the key for such quality of life technologies. And another area that I'm looking at is in more advanced state of virtualized reality. So, if you think of a, a big event such as the, say, expo,、uh, which is going to happen in Osaka, effectively the visitors, as well as the site cameras, have a large, gigantic, many camera,、uh, consist of a create a gigantic, a many camera, large number of camera system in a hallowed manner. So, if we can coordinate. Such video, then the people in the world can actually、um, virtually and freely、uh, access to the various data, not just the source data, but also the process、uh, to create the better quantity、uh, quality of data, as well as the removal, taking care of the privacy. People actually can access those information or data. Freely, I call it hop on, hop off, because people can hop on to any place, any location, and then if uh, they uh, get tired, wants to go another place, go get off, hop off from that, and then hop on to another、uh, source. Recently, I hate to see things like. Uh, fake face as the wrong use of advanced AI and computer vision technologies for wrong purposes, and indeed, I might be somewhat responsible in、uh, fake face because I remember that、uh, 2009 or 2010 ish. Uh, we created video which we named Obama speaks Japanese. The video actually, I moved my face and spoke、uh, Japanese, and then、uh, that image was processed and mapped to the face of President Obama as if he、uh, speaks just like I was speaking, and、uh, we thought, well, it it was. Uh, fun, in a sense, but、uh, actually the capability was intended for a serious and、uh, I thought a meaningful applications. For example,、uh, what we were thinking of is one、uh, to understand how a human facial expression or face head movement, in other words, how when you turn or nods. Or whether or when you turn or nods your head, 
or close uh, eyes or delay your response in uh, human to human communication. What is the effect of that? And by understanding that, we thought that、uh, we can help people who have the difficulty in、uh, smoothly communicating with each other. And also,、uh, we thought that such capabilities、uh, will help people who、uh, do not want to their own、uh, face in communicating with others. In today's、uh, concept, the avatar for use of avatar for、uh, Zoom and other video conferences. So the 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 goal was、uh, a genuine、uh, purpose. But when we look back, certainly that is the the kind of technology,、uh, the the region、uh, technologies which today we worry about fake face and other false information for wrong purpose. So from technologist point of view, I'm pretty sure that we should be able to、uh, create the way to. Certify the data that is genuine versus non-genuine, and so that just like copyright,、uh, the the watermarking,、uh, the video, so that、uh, the video or the synthesized data for wrong purposes by wrong people can be detected. So in any way, it's a sad、uh, and too bad some technology has some potential wrong. Uh, use uh, purpose.